Hey crafters, DM Scotty here, good to have you with me. Today I want to show you a technique um, of using old candy boxes to make some terrain. Uh, you know, our, our, uh, our videos are about being cheap, uh, recycling materials that would otherwise get thrown away into really cool, uh, fun, lightweight, easy to make pieces. And this is, fits the bill perfectly. So uh, let's go to the table and I'll show you how we're going to do that. Our project today is going to start with this innocuous Milk Duds box. So I've emptied everything out of it. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put, give it a little strength and weight. So I'm going to use a uh, roll of toilet paper, grab some off the reel, roll, and just shove it in there. And I'm going to grab a little more. I'm going to fill it up. So this will help keep it, give it a shape and, and it'll give a little bit of weight also. So now I'm going to glue that down. All right. So I've got that down. All right, so I'll let that dry a second and then we'll move on to our next phase. So now the box has like a little seam here. So what I want to try to do is hide those seams. So I'm going to use my glue gun, squirt it on the seam over the box and just kind of smear it all around. Now this will help give the box a texture, uh, kind of an interesting stone texture. Um, and then I can just work my way around the box. Uh, same thing, just squirt it on there. Drag your glue gun. So now um, I'll just work my way across the, around the box and I'll fill this all out. Now, um, be careful, uh, let these dry between uh, applications. You don't wanna burn yourself or stick to the box. So we'll uh, go ahead and do that and then we'll uh, move on to the next step. Now for my base that I'm gonna put the, uh, the bricks on or the uh, stones on, I've got this uh, thin cardboard that I've cut. It's from an old FedEx box. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a squirt a little glue on there and just kind of smear it around. Uh, this will give just give this a little texture, just a flat surface. All right, that should be good enough. Now I have that uh, the box sufficiently covered. I think I've got some nice uh, texture on there. So what I'll do is I'll grab my base, um, and then I've made three of these. So what I'm going to do is kind of lay them out. And I'm always thinking about playability. So when I stack these on top of each other, I want to leave enough room so a figure could stand on there um, and make it make for an interesting fight. So now I'm just going to glue those on. And that looks that looks good. All right, now so um, to uh, I'm going to go over it uh, and look and see if there's any loose areas that I think I might need to put some more glue on. Uh, now I've got it together. So uh, what I'll go, what I'll go do is I will um, I'll go uh, spray this black, and then we'll move to the painting phase. So here's our uh, base painted uh, blocks, and you can see those look pretty good. So now we're going to apply some gray to this, and I'm going to use a piece of a sponge I cut off so I can have a little bit of a smaller shape. And I'm just going to grab my uh, gray off the plate right onto the sponge. And then I can just start stippling that on.
Look how that uh, is popping out there. All right, so I'll let that dry and I'll move on to the next step. My next step is going to be add some uh, rubble and some stone to this, which I'm going to use the, uh, the famous construction sand. Uh, it's just all-purpose sand you can get at the, uh, um, the hardware store, uh, especially big box stores. Now, the reason I painted the gray before I put the, the um, rubble and, and stones on is because I wanted to give that a base coat of the gray before I put it on because once I put the, if I put the rubble on first and then tried to do it, it would saturate into the rubble and it'd be all gray. So I, I like having it dark. So what I'll do is I'll put the rubble on, uh, put a black wash on it, and then put the gray over it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and put that on now. So now I want to do some areas. I think I'll do um, some by the stones and then out front. and then around on the base. Give the base some texture. All right. So there we go. I think I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna use my plate to catch all the uh, dropping extras. Make sure you get all of it, and especially underneath the stones. So just pile it up so it, it, it goes into that crevice there. You can always just dump it back into your receptacle when you're done. So, all right, we'll let that dry and then we'll be ready for the next step. So here's my project so far. I've got the, uh, the, st the, the stones painted with the gray and I put the uh, rubble on, which is this is a construction sand and I showed you how I did that. I just wanted to show you what it looked like after I took the, the uh, stand off the piece. So now what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to do stuff you've seen me do already. I'm going to paint the base like a dirt, uh, paint the rubble uh, like the stone texture. I will highlight the stone texture with a lighter gray. And then I'm going to do one more technique uh, that I haven't shown you before that will add some uh, little uh, extra oomph to this piece, uh, make, it, make it interesting. So uh, I'll go ahead and paint this up and then we'll move on to that uh, next technique. All right, so here's my finished painted piece. Uh, looks pretty nice. Looks like some uh, old blocks stacked up on top of each other. Now I was talking about I want to do a technique that I haven't shown before, and uh, here's how we'll start it. So I'm going to remove this uh, piece so we can talk about it. Now here I have an old brush. You can see it's pretty beat up, and I'm going to use this for my project. So what I've done is I've got um, some green U paint, um, just acrylic. It's just. Uh, the color is, I think it's English U. Uh, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the brush, dip it into the paint, and just saturate that brush on there. Get that paint all in those bristles. Now, instead of painting with this brush, I am actually going to leave it to dry. I'm going to leave this brush to dry. So we will uh, we'll do that and then we'll come back. Here I have my dry brush and it's a it's a bit stiff, but that's okay. You could actually like uh, kind of break the uh, loosen up the bristles a bit. Um, so there we go. So now uh, I'm going to use this like grass on the uh, the terrain piece. Now. Um, the cool thing is you can have it as tall as you want. You could cut it down here uh, if you want it taller. If you want it shorter, you could cut it up here. So what I'm going to do is just um, take kind of a tuft. Grab my scissors. And then, so I have my tuft. Let's see if you can see that. Okay. So now I will get a couple other Tufts, same way. Now I'm not making this full length. Okay, now I'm using the small, I'm going to use the small glue gun. And 
and I'll pick a spot to put a tuft. Now one thing I like about this is that they don't take up a lot of space. Like some plants you put on uh, are going to be, especially the aquarium plants are going to be pushing out and taking up quite a bit of space. But these don't take up that much space. Let's see if you can see that there. Okay. So now I'll put a couple other ones on. Okay, so we got some nice grass on there. Grab those strings off the... Uh, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of roots on here. I, I can do that with this small glue gun. So I'm going to kind of um, go to where I did my um, plant and just put a little bit of and just kind of pull out. And that gives a little bit of root texture. And that's not something you have to do, but it kind of helps hide the glue, the glue gun. So it doesn't just look like a blob that you put on. You can, we'll paint these like, um, kind of like roots. Got one last one. Okay, so we'll give that a minute to dry. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to show you, I'll show you painting it, I'll just tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to paint the roots the dark brown, like I did with the rest of the piece, and then I'm going to use a light tan on the roots to kind of make them pop out. So I'll show you that in a minute after I uh, complete that. So here I painted the roots and I've got it all ready for play. Now you can see um, there the uh, root detail um, that I put in there uh, with the hot glue. Move around the piece, do another one. See the same got going on there. So that kind of hides the hot glue aspect of gluing those uh, pieces of grass down there. Now you could also um, add some um, moss to this which would be pretty easy. Just add a little bit of glue um, and you can get that, uh, that moss um, that you can use on uh, models and things uh, at the hobby store. Or you could just paint it on with a brush. Just kind of stipple it on. Just take your brush and just stipple it like dot it on in a, in a line or a cluster. And you could use, even use a different colored um, green to kind of bring it out. So uh, like use a darker green and a lighter green on top of it. So there we go. Now I'll show you what it looks like uh, with a with a setup with some miniatures. So here's our train on the tabletop, and uh, put a little, put a few little plants around it to give it some uh, some perspective. And uh, I have my my green table mat that I use for my outdoor encounters down here, and. Uh, you know, it looks really nice. You could also do uh, larger um, ones with, with more blocks or fewer blocks or individual blocks where you could just strew them around the battlefield because they make great cover um, for the battlefield. Also, when you construct this stuff, think about how you're going to use it in play. I, you know, I'll have a figure here so he could, you know, stand on that side or that side. So I left, a I left enough room on this that he could stand on either side. And you could stay, you know, an archer could stand on the top and get a great view of the battlefield um, from here. So, uh, you know, when you're constructing this stuff, think about it. I also there's some area behind where a guy could go back and he could still see what's going on over here, but you know, he'd be really hard to hit if he's hiding in there. So, um, you know, those look great, and these were just trash, uh, and we turned them into uh, terrain gold. So. A lesson to bring away from this is, you know, pieces of plastic or junk that are going to get thrown away that you think look unusual. You know, you can throw them in a junk box and save them. And, you know, you'd be surprised at how easy it is to just change junk into cool looking stuff. You know, you can change, you can easily, through the techniques we've shown, you can easily make it like a stone texture or even a metal, like rusted metal texture. Uh, just paint it up. 
add some hot glue to it um, and you know there you go you have something something else entirely than what it was and it was going to a landfill and now it's on your game table so um, you know always be mindful of, of junk that you're throwing away that you might say oh that's kind of cool I, I could I think I could use that for a game and, and throw it in your junk box and you know it might end up in your game so there you go uh, there's some cheap ways to make uh, some ruins uh, great way to recycle those little boxes from candy and uh, I'll see you next time on the DMs craft hey guys if you're really digging these videos and would like some more information or to talk to other crafters look at the link below in the description and uh, you can join my forum on the DMs craft we'd love to have you and I'll see you there